On this inside line, we're going to be diving into the Ford E-Series van. Now we're going to talk about what you want to look for, things to avoid, and how to make these really turn into the ultimate Overland rig. All right, let's get started. So without question, one of the most popular Overland platforms is the Ford Series E-Series van. And it makes sense. You can really convert them into uh, stealth RVs and campers, and they're actually pretty competent off-road once you convert them to four-wheel drive. Now, I am by no means a E-Series expert, but he is, whether he wants to admit it or not. Uh, this is my buddy Chris. He and you joined off-road. They specialize in aftermarket parts for the E-Series van, particularly the later model ones and I thought he'd be a great sort of uh, a knowledge bank to help guide others if you're looking at modifying your E-Series van or if you're just thinking about purchasing one. So let's get into if someone's looking for an E-Series van and wants to start out, like what's, is there a better year, is there a better generation, what would you recommend? It all depends on the use, honestly. You know, everyone has different needs um, and the E-Series will usually cover those needs. Um, it, you know, some people just want a daily driver, you know, 12 passenger van that you can haul the family around in. Some people want a two seater, uh, camping rig. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a wide variety, um, in the E-Series and we specialize in the fourth gen, which is 92 and up. Um, so the earlier models, uh, don't have quite the aftermarket support that the fourth gen does. So fourth gen is what I'll basically be covering today and talking about. Okay, perfect. And that seems to be the most popular. And like I say, aftermarket support is huge and they spanned a very long time. Now, uh, if you wanted to buy a new E-Series van, you can buy an E-Series cutaway chassis, but you can no longer buy the E-Series van. That's been replaced by the Transit, I guess? Yeah. So the last year for a full-bodied E-Series was 2014. Okay. So now all you can buy is a cutaway chassis, which is what you see all your RVs, you know, uh, U-Hauls or something custom like this starts, will start its life as a cutaway chassis. Okay. Um, Field Vans in California is actually making a fiberglass body. They're calling it their, um, their classic. Um, so they, they've made their own body that they're putting on the new cutaways as a full you know, uh, sportsmobile style uh, build, which is really neat. But other than that, there aren't any options to body a new cutaway chassis. Okay, so let's get into uh, the basic stuff. Now, powertrain, there are a lot of different, you had the 5.4 gas engines all the way up to these big 7.3s, you've got diesel options. Uh, is there any particular powertrain that you prefer or have better luck with? Yeah, that's a tr tricky one. Yeah, there are a lot of different engines in this uh, 92 and up E-Series. Um, uh, my favorite is, uh, besides the new 7.3, which I'm not gonna, count because they're they're only in the cutaways and the 2021s and up uh, my favorite powertrain would be the v10 uh, particularly the 05 up v10 because they came with the uh, 5r110 transmission the five speed which is one of the best transmissions ford's ever built um, earlier than that the v10s had the uh, 4r100 or the e4od also good transmissions but for the four-wheel drive conversion they need to come out and be torn down to be made four-wheel drive um, so you know, but the 5.4 is a great engine. All the Ford mod motors are good. Um, they're good and reliable. Um, I have a 5.4 as my daily driver, and I love it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, made for specific use. Now, the diesels, I know a lot of people think that's the ultimate go-to. Uh, you could get a 7.3 early on, and then the 6-liter. What has been your experience with the diesels, and what do you kind of tell customers or people that are navigating, sort of looking at one of these vans? Yeah, again, it depends on their abs their personal needs and what they need and what the what their requirements are for the van. I personally, I'm I'm happy to say that I'm diesel free in my life, uh, which feels good. Um, you know, they're getting older, and that's the problem. You know, the uh, the last year for a 7.3 in the E Series was 2003, right. so um, they're those those rigs are getting older. And uh, I've found through the years that gas is always more reliable than diesel. Um, and if you calculate your total cost of ownership, you know, your higher entry price of buying the diesel, your higher maintenance costs, your higher fuel costs, um, you're always going to wind up economically better with a gas engine. Interesting. So that's definitely not something I think most people would have. No, and, and some, yeah, people are going to comment and say that I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's 
that's fine. I'm just, you know, I'm just stating what we've seen over the years as far as reliability goes. One of my employees loves to say, so you know what we never have to work on? Gas vans. Almost every diesel that comes through the shop winds up having some little issue um, or, you know, even little things like just eating batteries. Uh, but, and they're, they're you know, harder to diagnose. Um, I do avoid the 6.0 diesel. Um, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a bulletproofed 6.0 diesel, um, no matter how much you do to them. For overlanding purposes and actually making these things more durable, now you can't really buy these things four-wheel drive from the factory. Most of the time you're going to see an aftermarket conversion. Um, what does someone have to do to make that a reality? It, you know, I know there are some DIY sort of style kits that you offer, and I know you guys do that conversion in-house. So if someone wants to make this four-wheel drive, what are they realistically looking at to do to make that happen? Well, it depends on your skill level and how much you want to do yourself. So we were the first to ever make a do-it-yourself four-wheel drive van conversion kit for the E-Series. So um, we have a YouTube video a tutorial. You can you know, watch that to, make, to decide whether it's something you want to tackle yourself or not. We also have an FAQ page on the website um, that answers a lot of the general questions. Um, I've had guys with little to no mechanical ability do it in their driveway, um, all the way up to pro shops do the kit. There are a lot of variables. So our kit prices, our bare kits, um, start at about five to $6,000. And that's a complete kit. That's everything we can supply you with um, to, if you do your own axle and transfer case. Okay. So we have uh, axle options. We have a transfer case that we sell. Um, so you know you can spend five to 6,000 with a kit from us and source your own axle and T case and do your own transmission mods or exhaust mods if needed. Um, or you can do that or just send the van to us for a complete turnkey swap. The turnkey swaps at our shop are average about 25,000 and then uh, we add in what I call goodies, you know, bumpers, lights, uh, onboard air, S-pod, roof racks, uh, stuff like that. Okay. And I've had a lot of guys over the years that, you know, did that themselves. They bought our kit and then built their own axle and then they'd tell me later like, hey, you know, in the end I sh should just bought your axle, right. you know, to save me the headache. Because, you know, there can be some specialty tools that are needed to, you know, to press ball joints and seals and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you're going to spend, um, even if you do it yourself and you're really thrifty, um, you're going to be into it for you know twelve to fifteen thousand if you build a proper safe uh, four-wheel drive van. Okay, now let's talk about uh, actually making these things for camping and, and overlanding. Like uh, you know, most vans you're going to buy are probably going to be like old like beer trucks or delivery yeah, vans. Shell. They're going to be an empty shell. Yeah. So what do you recommend for someone that's uh, maybe not super handy? I mean, obviously you always have that DIY option of the guy putting the air mattress in with the ARB uh, fridge. Yeah. But if someone's looking to do something a little bit more advanced, like what are your options for that? Well, again, it's, there, there's no real answer to that. You know, some guys, I've seen some really talented guys build their own interiors. Um, there are still plenty of companies. There are more van company, interior companies now than ever. Um, most of them are doing them the more that, you know, the Sprinters and Promaster, the more Euro style vans. Um, but you can go mild to wild. You can do something real basic or you can have it look like a luxury condominium. Are there any particular companies that you've had uh, good success with or you send some of your customers to to get uh, custom interior outfitted for the E-Series? Uh, there have been a lot of them that have done it. Sportsmobile is a good one. Sportsmobile Texas is still doing uh, E-Series and I think in Indiana also. Um, and you've got a lot of just, you know, mom and pop van shops around the country that are still capable of building really nice interiors. Okay. Um, and you can do, you know, regular top, high top, pop tops. There's a lot of options out there. So the, the high tops, I know, uh, is it Fiberine that makes the really, really, some of the like taller yeah. ones where you cut the top off and put the new top on? Yeah, and we now like the Fiberine top. That yeah. gives you uh, uh, really the ability, if you're a taller person, uh, not my problem, uh, <laughs> uh, where you can walk in and have more storage or change your bed configuration pretty easily? Yeah, I'm a fan of high tops over pop tops because you get more fixed space. Okay. Um, with the pop tops, you know, they cut the roof pretty narrow because right. they have to have room for all the cloth to come down and sit. Um, so you get more usable space with a high top. Right. And then you can configure them how you want. We usually put like a little storage spot up front. I mean, we don't do interiors, but we'll cut the roof um, for future storage in the front over the cab. Right. Um, and in the back, you can cut where you want to add some storage. Um, you can insulate it better. Um, and you know, they're not, uh, one of the neg big negative things that people think are, are um, go along with high tops is stability. You really don't feel it. With a proper suspension, you don't feel that it's, you've got an extra 20, 24 inches on top of you. Right. And you don't feel the weight. Uh, now, talking about suspension and, and sort of these 
uh, drivability packages. The E series kind of has a small wheel well. So what's normally the the like out of like how big of a tire can you put on one of these things? Let's say someone just wanted a two wheel drive one and just wanted to put a bigger tire. How big of a tire can you put on these things? That um, with stock suspension. Yeah. With stock suspension with and some with some fender trimming and bumper trimming, you can fit a 265, you know, 75, 16. Right. Um, again, you'll see, if you get on the internet, you're gonna get confused and see all these guys are like, well, I put 35s on my van stock. And it's like, no, you didn't, you know, not without hacking it, um, yeah. uh, hacking it up. So the, so the proper way to, let's say, you know, the van next to us right now is running a 37 inch tall, you know, near a Ridge Grappler, uh, to get a 37 under uh, uh, one of these vans, how much lift do you really need? eight inch eight inches yeah okay so the wheel well like you said the wheel well is small in the vans that's why on our leaf spring suspension we move the axle forward two inches um if you see a lot of the four-wheel drive van econo lines um they the axle placement is dictated by the stock coil buckets right so it almost looks as if the van's walking on its tippy toes right. and also that you just can't articulate it because you get into the back of the fender so we move the axle forward two inches. That allows us to run a taller, a bigger tire with less lift, and you can actually articulate it without getting into the wheel well. Right. Now, uh, if someone's thinking about, I guess, uh, building one of these things out, uh, is a E150 better to start with? A E250? Like what? What's good question? Um, generally, I tell people to avoid the E150s for a few reasons. Um, from from '92 to '07. Uh, the E-150s came five lug with a Ford 8.8 .8 rear axle. So if you find, um, now some guys might already have an E-150 set up like that, um, that they're in love with, or it meets, you know, they find this super cool retro, you know, rad era uh, conversion van. Um, you can do, you can convert them to four wheel drive. Our stuff works, but you can have to replace a rear axle also. So that just adds to the cost. So a lot of guys will be enticed by the lower price of E-150s. But in the end, you're going to spend more money converting that one to four-wheel drive than if you started with a 250 or 350. Um, now, in 2008, Ford put the uh, eight-lug semi-float Dana 60 in everything, even the E-150s. Okay. So if it's a 2008 to 2014 E-150, um, that's you save you're saving time and money because it already it already has an eight-lug axle. In it. But there's is there any significant frame differences? Like you know an F-150 frame versus an F-250 frame is obviously wildly different. Sure. Is there big frame differences between these vans from an F-150 to F-3 or E-150 to e yeah. E-350? In the rear, yes. Okay. Uh, up front, the frame horns are all the same. Um, in the back, uh, the the E-150s and even the E-250s have a shorter frame. It's not as heavy duty. Um, the early, the 92 to uh, 07s, like I spoke of earlier, have a two and a half inch wide spring. Um, so yes, if you get an E150 and you want to fully build it out into a camper van, it's not a good idea okay. because you have the narrower springs and the smaller frame. You want to start with a, a 250 or 350. 350s are actually most common in the E-Series. Okay. Most of your van is going to be 350s. The most common engine is going to be the 5.4. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Is there anything else you can think of for someone that's looking at buying an E-Series van that, that they should be aware of or just things to be cautious of that you've learned over the years? Uh, rust is always the enemy. Rust is always going to be your number one enemy on, on looking for a used van. Uh, just And what I tell guys is just get picks, get undercarriage picks. Most of the time you find a for sale ad, they don't show you the underside of the vehicle. Um, they just show you the outside, so you have to ask and look for a few things. I tell guys all the time, like, just email me the link. I'll be glad to look at it and see if I see any signs. You know, you just have to look for signs of, um, of bad repairs. Um, you know, sometimes they'll sneak through, but also it just depends on geographically where it is. You know, I've learned over the years, I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I've learned not to trust anybody in the rust belt when they talk about rust and like, oh, it's fine, it's no, it's no big deal. And that, to, that, to them, that means like, well, I can't stick my whole hand through, right. you know, rusted body panel, only a little bit. Um, so just get pictures, get pictures. Um, the E-Series van market is super hot right now and you have to be ready to pounce on. If you find, if you make up your mind about this is the van I want, this is what I'm looking for, be ready to absolutely jump on it as quick as you can. Put a deposit down, get the van because it will disappear in sometimes the same day um, and just be ready um, because they, they, they're getting harder and harder to find in good condition. Uh, but do your research, you know, get your pictures, make sure that it's not rusty and um, yeah, just try to be smart about it. Okay, so one last thing. I know a lot of these E-Series motorhomes uh, can be converted to four-wheel drive. I've seen you guys do that on your page. Yeah. Uh, and some of these motorhomes are pretty decent value. Uh, I don't think uh, it's really 
anybody maybe wants to go hardcore off-roading, yeah. but it might be a good option if you live in a place that snows a lot and want to take yeah. your, your RV out or if you live at the beach like I do and, yeah. and, and, and want to do that. Is there any particular RVs that, hey, if you find a certain year or anything like that, you can give advice for? No, uh, RVs are even a wider variety than the regular E series as right. far as the body configurations. Um, but they, um, we do build and sell a lot of kits for RVs. Uh, we've got a lot in New York. Um, guys go out on the beach. We send a lot. Uh, there's a lot in Colorado. You know, they a lot of guys like to ski out of them. Right. They want the four wheel drive to get up to the, the ski areas. Um, yeah, and like you said, they're not off road. You know, a lot of people think we convert these things to four wheel drive and you can take them out trail riding. It's just not. Right. It's You're just making it four wheel drive to get it. You're getting more stability. stability. Yeah. Right. Like when these RVs leave the factory, um, the Ford factory, they go to the RV manufacturer. The RV manufacturer plops a bunch of weight on them and then sends them down the road. Right. And they don't do anything to the suspension. Some of them, you might see some band aids like a better sway bar or airbags or even sometimes shocks. My RV that I just got came with Bilstein shocks and uh, a Helwig sway bar in the rear and airbags. So it's like they're making some effort, but it's still. You're not dealing with the issue, which is that it's grossly undersprung. Right. So um, part of our conversion with the RVs, we don't we don't do any of them until we weigh it. We weigh the RV front and rear, and we have custom springs made to that weight, the actual weight of the rig, and it's a night and day difference in handling and drivability. Um, but as far as picking an RV, that's all about what you need and what you want. You know, some people are you, you might they might just be a retired couple that just want a little 24, 26 foot RV. To people who have eight kids who need a 30 footer. Um, it all depends on your particular needs. Um, but the, the RV conversions work out really well. So if anybody has any questions, they can call you on your cell phone at? <laughs> <laughs> 910. Right away. <laughs> um, yeah, you email chris at youjoinoffroad.com. Check out our website. Uh, we're also on Instagram. You can always send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. I answer those um, constantly. Okay. Um, well, hopefully this has been a, a relative guide for if you're looking for an E-Series van, you know, kind of what to watch out for, what yeah. some of the better ones are. It's, uh, it's such a cool platform. You can do so many things with them. I know there's not really a perfect one size fits all, but it's awesome that it's a van platform that you can you make four wheel drive. You can do things like aftermarket bumpers and lights. You can yeah. haul all your kids. I think it's really, they're way more practical than they used to be. I think they're actually more practical once you make them four wheel drive because yeah. it really, really diversifies it. So yeah. hopefully you guys found this uh, helpful, informative. Uh, if you ever have any questions for me, you can find me at Ollie Mansour Editor on Instagram. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.